Today we are going to start our new unit from the Romans of Thermology book that is the orbital cavity. First of all know that there are seven bones which forms a pear shaped or you can say that the quadrilateral bony orbit or you can say this is the cone shaped bony orbit. Base corresponds to the open anterior end while apex corresponds to the optic foramen. If we draw the structure of the cone to show the resemblance to the orbit, this is the open anterior end as written here. Open anterior end it corresponds to the base while apex this is the apex corresponds to the apex corresponds to optic foramen we can see in this diagram that this hole this is the open anterior end while this is the optic foramen which corresponds to the apex Now the widest part of the orbit is 1.5 cm behind the orbital margin. So remember that widest part of the orbital uh, orbit is 1.5 cm behind the orbital margin. What is the uh, position of the eyeball in the orbit? Eye in the orbit is situated anteriorly near the roof and laterally it is remembered by the mnemonic ARL while the position of the orbit itself is different it is forward it is inward and slightly downward both both of these positions are very important for the MCQs volume of the orbit is 30 ml while the volume of the eyeball is 6.5 ml Another important point written from the Snell's anatomy is because the lateral orbital margin is least prominent, it is consequently the lateral surface of the eyeball that is most exposed. Here is, we are talking about the lateral orbital margin. This is the lateral orbital margin, it is least prominent, that's why the Eyeball located inside the orbital margin is most exposed laterally. Now the different bones making the different walls of the orbit. In general, there are three walls of the orbit: medial wall inferior wall or we can say that is the floor lateral wall and the roof one is the roof first of all see in the diagram that what are the major bones forming the uh, different walls of the orbit so first of all remember the major bones which form the bony orbit so it will be easy this hole this is the frontal bone frontal bone okay this is the zygomatic bone written here this is the maxillary bone okay maxillary bone And the structure located here inside, this is the sophenite bone. We'll see that this is the greater wing of the sophenite bone. Okay, look here, greater wing of the sophenite bone. This is the lesser wing of the sophenite bone. And this is the here is also the body situated. 
so these are the four major bones frontal bone zygomatic bone maxillary bone and the sphenoid bone first of all have a look at the uh, orbit uh, orbital floor or the roof of the orbit we have seen that this is the frontal bone so major part of the orbital floor is made by the you can easily say now that it is made by the frontal bone mainly and smaller part look here that this is also made by the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone okay lesser wing of the sphenoid bone now comes to the medial wall uh, this is the medial wall medial wall small bone located here this is the ethmoid bone ethmoid bone okay this is the major part of the medial wall this also located here is the body of the sphenoid bone and we have seen that this is the maxillary bone this is the frontal process of the maxilla making the part of the medial orbital wall okay three bones mainly the this is ethmoid bone frontal process of maxilla and also body of the sphenoid bone uh, now the inferior orbital wall this is the inferior major part you can say that this major part this is the maxillary bone now we are studying the inferior wall or the floor major part by the frontal by the orbital plate orbital plate of the maxilla and also mainly by the zygomatic bone small part here zygomatic bone and also by the palatine bone okay so remember that palatine bone is part of the inferior wall or the floor of the orbit now the remaining is the lateral wall this is the lateral wall we can see that uh, we know that this is the zygomatic bone mainly and also the lateral part located here greater wing of the sphenoid bone okay if you just remember the major four bones frontal bone zygomatic bone maxillary bone and the sphenoid bone you can remember all these walls very easily so the points written here first of all is the medial wall this is the thinnest remember that this is the thinnest and note here that lateral wall is the thickest it is thinnest but it is not the main site of the fracture the main site of the fracture in the orbit is the floor or the inferior wall it is the weakest it is not the thinnest it is the weakest especially at its medial aspect it is the site of the blowout fracture of the orbit it is mainly made by the orbital plate of the maxilla we have seen zygomatic and the palatine bone lateral wall this is thickest we have seen that it is made by the zygomatic bone mainly and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone roof is made mainly by the orbital plate of the frontal bone mainly and the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone so now come forward that uh, floor of the orbit floor of the orbit lies over the maxillary sinus this is uh, floor of the orbit this is the maxillary bone making here the maxillary sinus so it lies over the maxillary sinus palatine bone is not part of the medial orbital wall this is an mcq point okay we have discussed already superior orbital fissure lies between the greater and the lesser wings of the sphenoid bone okay we will see 
here the superior orbital fissure we have i have told you already that this is the greater wing this is the lesser wing so this structure here this is the superior orbital fissure and here is located the inferior orbital fissure between the greater wing and the zygomate damage to the floor of middle cranial fossa will damage the greater wing of the sphenoid bone okay if the middle cranial fossa not the medial middle cranial fossa is damaged it will affect the greater wing of the sphenoid bone very important mcq glabella is not is the part of the frontal bone this is the part of the frontal bone abducens nerve passes through the cavernous sinus so any pathology that affects the uh, cavernous sinus will also affect the abducens nerve palsy so the sign of the cavernous sinus thrombosis is the abducens nerve palsy there are no lymphatics present in the orbit but there are two venous systems in the eye whole uvea including the iris is drained by the vorticose vein one vortex vein drains the each quadrant of the eye pore now the different structures passing through the superior orbital fissure and the inferior orbital fissure superior orbital fissure we have seen that it is located between the greater wing and the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone so the structures passing from the lateral to the medial outside the common tendinous ring what is the common tendinous ring this is the structure giving rise to the erecti muscles here this is the common tendinous uh, ring located close to the optic nerve it gives rise to the origin of the erecti muscles so what structures passes outside this ring uh, lacrimal nerve frontal nerve trochlear nerve superior ophthalmic vein you can remember easily by the mnemonic lfts and what structure passes within the ten common tendinous ring through the superior orbital fissure these are three oculomotor both branches superior branch and inferior branch nasociliary nerve and the abducens nerve okay abducens now what are the structure passes through the inferior orbital fissure we have seen that the inferior orbital fissure located between the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and the maxillary bone it transmits maxillary nerve zygomatic nerve inferior of thalamic vein branch of the pterygo palatine ganglion one last point related to the orbital cavity unit is the orbital muscle of the muller this is the vestigial muscle this is the smooth muscle remember that this is the smooth muscle it bridges the inferior orbital fissure it is related to the inferior orbital fissure vestigial muscle no function is known nerve supply is very important it is asked in the mcq that it is supplied only by the sympathetic okay now we can see the mcqs which can be asked from this portion in the exam first of all what is the lateral orbital wall is formed mainly by which structure the second question is volume of the orbit is you can give the answers in the comments final answer will be given in the comment section that was all about today's lecture